Hey, what's up? Looks like we're live. So uh, thank you to anyone who joins. Let me know you can hear me well. Let me know you can see me well. Uh, we're going to do something very fun today, and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, so today we're going to talk about perspective, 3D, a bunch of interesting stuff, things that I know a lot of people struggle with. Um, and it's just going to be really fun uh, because it's something I've been wanting to do for a while now. Let me show you my desk. So here we go. Ignore the wire. So I've got a bunch of pictures here. Uh, and then we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to actually analyze the perspective on them. Okay. Now I do want to let a few more people get in. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, good evening. Good day. Whatever time of day you're watching. I see we have Mark Ohio in the house. So good morning, Mark. We have Donna Bowman. Good morning, Donna. Um, and again, let me know uh, that you can hear me. Let me know that everything is working fine. And hopefully we'll get more people in the house soon. Uh, I did make sure to post about this live a little more in advance. Now we may have some interruptions. May is supposed to come back home and Ruth may bark. So just letting you know, uh, we have Dave here. Hey, how are you, Dave? Uh, so obviously it's getting hot immediately. So I'm going to turn the AC to be a little stronger. Uh, let me show you my face. So basically I had a couple of good days. Uh, I've been working on a few stuff. I feel like I did go a bit into my shell <laughs> lately and worked on the things um, I want to in a selfish way. That's fun because I get to uh, create and really make myself better, improve myself so that you can also uh, enjoy my stuff more. Um, let me make sure my headphones work though. Yeah, okay, we're good. Um, so here's the thing. Let me know who you are, where you're from. And also, if I can ask, please uh, leave a like, like just hit the like button because that helps the stream get to more people. So we're going to have more people in the house. Um, so please, please, please do that. If you can, I can already see 10 likes. So that's great. Thank you so much for that. Uh, let's see who we got here. Uh, Abel Antonio. Hello, John. Hi, Leron. I hope you're well, my friend. Thank you, John. I'm going to try to cram all of the important stuff into the first hour. I don't know why my air condition didn't start working. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'm going to try to squeeze all the most important things into one hour so that you can uh, watch the whole thing. Let me move this a bit closer here so you can better see me. Uh, it's getting dark earlier. Obviously, winter's on the way. Um, let's see. Claudia uh, Yobera. Is that a double L? Hola. How are you, Claudia? Uh, Laurel B. Good morning. Also from Virginia. Uh, Dave says, good to see you. Sounds fine. Thank you so much, Dave. Uh, Natalie Kelly. Good evening. Liron from Nat in Perth, Australia. Uh, that's cool. Australia in the house. Uh, Claudia is from Barcelona. Jackie Megan. Hello, Liron. Jackie Megan from uh, Georgia, USA. Uh, so let's get going. I'm just going to explain again what I'm planning on doing in this one. Uh, so basically, I have here a bunch of reference photos. And because I get so many questions about perspective, and I know it's one of those very technical, almost nightmarish topics I know a lot of people struggle with, what I thought I'd do is just go over them. I have notes for each one. Uh, and I think just that will really help you to better understand perspective. Then I have just a bunch of uh, paper, cheap printer paper, which is the most fun for this purpose. Uh, and I'm just going to show you how to apply uh, what we're looking at. Now, if you have any questions, I do want you to write them in the chat, um, as many as you have, because this is the opportunity to address these issues that everyone faces when it comes to perspective. I know that um, I get repeat questions all the time. So now is your chance to uh, leave that question. Let me try moving this a bit here and then playing around with the angle a bit like that. Maybe it'll be better. Um, so we're going to get started. Uh, I think, let, let's see who's here. Uh, James Baker, James from London. Hey, James, how are you? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Dave, UK is definitely represented. We have the Billy Pearl, Annie from Montreal, Canada. We have Gail Check, greetings from Pennsylvania. So happy for this virtual visit. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is going to be uh, really focused around drawing. Uh, rather than painting, it's not going to be, it's not going to have anything to do with watercolor pretty much. Um, but I do want to say having a strong base to build upon in drawing is really beneficial for your paintings as well. You can really tell uh, when, when someone has the drawing skills and it doesn't take 
the things that you'd necessarily expect. Like you don't need to have fine control with your hand. You don't need all of that. And a good example of that is I see quite a lot of people who come from the architecture angle um, and they don't necessarily know how to draw, but they understand the concepts very well. And this is actually enough to uh, get them uh, really, really nice results with shaky lines, with lack of technique. It doesn't matter. As long as you understand the concepts, you'll do a much better job at applying them. Um, so we have Felicia uh, Whitefield from South Carolina. We have Anne from Ontario, uh, New York. So there's a Ontario in New York. Uh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Uh, thanks for doing this. You got it. Uh, Carol Baskin from upstate New York. Um, we have uh, from Sofia, Bulgaria. I can't read your name because I can't read. Um, is that Russian? I'm not sure. I could guess, but I don't know. Maybe Marta. Uh, I'll, that's my guess, but I really can't read Russian uh, letters. So sorry about that. Uh, Isabella Kopa, Kopachinska. Hello from Kopa. Um, I know how to pronounce that too. Um, wait, I need to remember. Uh, uh, Kopajinska, maybe? Hello from Poland. I'm doing my best here, sorry. Um, so now we... Ooh, nice. Okay, so we have about 45 people in the house. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, let's begin. Um, first, uh, first, we're going to do one-point perspective, which is like the most obvious type of scene. So when you have this kind of a scene, everything just moves away from us. And I have a couple of examples of this, like a cityscape... We're gonna. This, that's an interesting one. Another cityscape, and I want to show you how that works. So, the very basic concept is this, and as long as you remember that, you'll do all right. Objects that are closer to us appear to be larger, while objects that are farther from us appear to be smaller. So, if you take this marker, you just hold it up to the camera. Uh, this edge appears to be larger than this edge. Now, it may actually taper in real life, but but it still will look smaller. So let me show you. Look at the huge differential in size between this side and that side. Okay, I know it's out of focus, but just hopefully that brings the, the concept home. As long as you remember that, you'll be okay. So when you look at this kind of a scene, this road, it moves away from us. We have these two lines. Now, in reality, they are parallel. I had a feeling you won't be able to see the pen. So we have this big pen. Uh, let's see if it doesn't go through. No, I think it's fine, but let's move it just in case. So we have this row. Now, if you look at it from above, what would it look like? It, you'll just have two parallel lines, right? With the dotted line in the middle. Because we're looking at it in perspective, these lines move away from us. Okay, that's the key part. They move away from us and they taper. That's the word you want to always remember, taper. And I'm going to do a, a, a side tangent. Wasn't planning on it, but I'm going to do a side tangent. A lot of people, the way they draw cubes, for example, is just two perfect squares connected by these lines. Now, in reality, perspective is always at play. Always. So what happens is uh, this edge of the cube will appear to look to, to be smaller than this one. So how do you remedy that? How do you prevent them from being the same uh, distance? You taper these two lines. That's a longer one. And instead of these being parallel, one is in this angle. And the other one's not the same angle, but it's tapered like so. Okay, how does it make sense? And then when you close off this gap, it appears to be moving away from us. So a cube essentially will look more like this, okay? I'm doing this just as a quick example. We're gonna leave this aside in just a moment. But if you really want your cubes to look good, you're gonna have to taper the lines. Now look at the, the difference between these two. Now I know a lot of people have a hard time with the very basic concept. So one, I want to get you to this point where you can do this, understand a three-dimensional shape. Then I want to bring you over to this point where you can really understand perspective. And that cube is much more dynamic. It looks much better. Even if we draw the lines at the back here, you see? The lines that are uh, you can't see from this angle, you'll still get a much more interesting dynamic cube with this edge closer to us. Okay, just a quick aside. Let's see who's in the house. Uh, we have Abel Antonio from the Dominican Republic uh, in the Caribbean. Uchma Murmo, hello from India. 
Uh, Nacy Arnold, Jersey girl who loves following your work. Thank you so much, Nacy. Uh, Stephanie Coral, so excited about perspective. John Watercolors, heard you say on last live session about doing a live Q&A. This would be great, definitely. I will do a live Q&A, just open topics, whatever you want. Uh, Abdul Wahab, hello from Russia. Cool. Um, so uh, let me know that this is making sense. Like I, um, your feedback in the comments will help in the chat. Uh, so definitely let me know that you understand and, and everything. And if you need me to stop and talk more about something, well, let me know and I will. So once again, to our point, one point perspective. And by the way, if I miss chats, my apologies, because it may be uh, delayed. Uh, so I will address them whenever I can. So here, these lines all are parallel in reality. They are parallel, one, two, three. But because they move away from us, they taper. Now, there is a very interesting nuance that has to do with this curve. We're going to talk about that in just one moment. Okay, but I do want to show you something. What would happen if I add elements to this uh, photo? They're going to conform to perspective as well. So let's say I have just a wire here, like a power line. So that will be maybe something like this. Okay. And then I'm going to have another power line here. What's going to be the relationship? This one's going to be smaller. Now, forget about how you measure and how you figure that out. Let's just draw one smaller and look at how much sense that makes. You can tell. And actually, I want to fix that angle because I do want you to see things perfectly from above. So uh, you'll have to forgive me as I set it up. One moment. It is important in this example. I do want you to see things as, as, not, as not crooked. So like this lowest angle I can get here. Sorry about the shakiness, you see? Okay, that's better. It's a little better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Um, so you get all of these uh, power lines that also taper in size. Okay, they also go, they, they become smaller. Okay, so we have one this size, one that size. Now, one another this size. Now, look at this part of the road. The distance from us to this point and from us to the, that point is quite similar. Why? Because the road is moving uh, not away from us, but rather kind of parallel. So this wire is going to be kind of the same size. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Wire, sorry, a power line. Now the lines connecting them together are going to conform to that same idea. So we're going to have these lines here, these lines here, these lines here, and these lines here. Does that make sense? Let me know. Okay. Now, an important note about that. The gap between the power lines will also become smaller. Okay, this is just, I'm still not talking about how you know how to draw these things. I don't care about any of that now. I'm just talking about the concepts. I want you to understand it on a conceptual level. The gap, the distance between them is also going to become smaller. So for a good example, imagine you have these stumps at the side of the road. I don't even know what to call these, but Let's just imagine they're here and let's do them here just so that you're not too confused. Here's a stump. The next stump, stump, let's say it's somewhere around here. Now, the next one is not going to be the same distance. So if I have this, uh, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to use the same one. So if I have this distance here, I'm not going to have the same distance here. And automatically, I did it not the same distance just because I understand perspective. But let's let's do this again. We have another one here. So the next one is not going to be here. You see, let me measure this for you. So that's one and two. And they're of kind of an equal distance. OK, but this looks wrong. Why? Because the gap between them should become shorter. So it should be somewhere around here. And the more we go into the distance, the closer they will appear to be, you see? And when you put them in identical distances, it's actually going to look like one is here, another one is here, and then another one is way back. Okay, I'm going to better explain this later. I don't want to go in too much of a niche, but uh, I see in the comments that you say it makes sense. So thank you for that. I really am happy to hear. Um, I'm thinking about, well, let's keep it at that for now. Okay, so this is a good example of one point perspective. We're going to get rid of this. Now, let me show you another one. This is the more common one you'll see. And if you have any specific questions, let me know in the chat. This is a more common example of what you'd see with one point perspective. 
it's a cityscape, it's not nature, so you have a bunch of things. Now here, if you remove this road, you don't have much in terms of perspective. You have one thing, and that's the ridge of mountains. You see? It's no coincidence that it gets larger the closer it is to us. That's because of perspective. Obviously, this mountaintop could be exponentially higher than this one, and you'll get something like that, okay? But just saying, for the most part, it's going to conform to this pattern. Same pattern you see all throughout this scene. Well, and this conforms to a, a bit of a different uh, vanishing point. We'll talk about that in a moment. But this is the more common thing you'll see, and exactly the same thing happens. All parallel lines are going to um, uh, taper to the same vanishing point. When you find the meeting point of all of these lines, which is very easy in a place like New York, there's a bunch of them, this is going to be the vanishing point. Okay, right here in the middle. So, this taxi, you see this line, it's going to conform to here. You see this line, and it's not going to be perfect because I understand it, the city is not built perfectly, or it's not built in a way that everything conforms to the same vanishing point. This road could take a few very gentle turns that will greatly affect um, this effect of, of, of tapering. Okay, but, but generally speaking, if you connect this line here, and this is curved, remember, curved things work a little differently, but if you connect this line over here, you'll get somewhere close. This line here, uh, this line here between the tires, uh, all of the tops of the buildings, check this out. Top of the building leads to about the same spot, this one. This is very prominent, so pay close attention. See, it goes to the same general direction. Everything moves towards this vanishing point. Forget about tops of buildings, sides of buildings. This size of the building will work its way to the same place. This side as well. All of these things. Now, what does that teach us? Even just as a quick tip, when you're painting or drawing, here's what you can do. You can place a building and just drop a few lines that conform to that same perspective and you'll get uh, the, the nice, interesting effect of the building. Just saying, okay, just an example. Um, but yeah, so you'll have everything tapering, whoops, so you'll have everything tapering to that same vanishing point. Let me show you yet another one, okay? Let me show you an interesting one, actually, and this is nice to compare. So when you look at this kind of a thing, here, this is the exact opposite of this Kind of a thing. So this road moves away from us, so it becomes smaller. Now let's move this away. This road is actually sideways. We're looking at it from the side. So in effect, this line and this line almost don't taper. They almost don't taper. It's a bit of a complex thing, but imagine you're looking to the left. The more you're looking in that direction, the more you'll see them tapering. But let's forget about that. So the road itself, its direction does not taper. But look at these details on the road that do move away from us. You'll get this same effect of perspective. And very often you'll see me in my paintings just dropping a few of these lines. Just a few of them. Okay? It helps build the three-dimensionality of the scene. Now look at the houses. So this one is right in front of us. So, there isn't a lot of perspective in play, but look at this one. For example, these lines all also move towards a vanishing point, somewhere here. It's a bit hard to tell, the angle is very, it's a very sharp angle, but it's somewhere in this general area, same as these lines, okay? Not like these lines. These are also parallel to the road, okay? So, they don't really move away from us. Now, they do move away from us and taper very subtly. So you may get an angle like this and an angle that's not exactly the same, but a little bit smaller, okay? Just a little bit. Now, I don't even take into consideration the fact that this is at, an, at a recline, uh, incline or whatever. This doesn't matter, okay? But here there is no perspective on the road itself, okay? Next example of one-point perspective that's also, I think, very helpful uh, is this one. Very similar to the previous one. Okay, this is Japan, probably Tokyo. Just another one-point perspective example. Again, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, all of these lines, all of these lines lead us to that same general point. 
So if you want to draw a, cit a cityscape, all you really have to do when you think about it is, this is your scene. You just drop a point in the middle. You draw a lot of lines coming out of that. And anything you'll place on that, and by the way, this is the horizon. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. Everything you'll place here will work. There's a building here. Forget about composition. Forget about where the buildings are. Just take note of the fact that there is a building. Maybe there is a building here in the distance, okay? And it moves uh, towards us, something like this. Maybe there is a person coming, walking towards us, and there's another person at the back. See? No, that's not a good example, actually. Let me show you another person right here. Same thing, okay? If you connect them, you all, they all end up here. So just a quick um, observation for you and how to apply it, but just very quick. So let me see the comments just for a second, make sure everything's okay. Uh, people are saying that it makes sense, it's clicking. Thank you, Sherry. Stephanie Corral, I've seen this in a book, but it never made sense. Now it makes better sense. I'm so happy to hear. It's just, I think, the best way to demonstrate this. And we're going to go into more complex topics, so you may want to buckle up and focus. Uh, and I see Arnold, uh, to be a great artist and be able to teach us a gift. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it. And if, if I have that gift, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and share it as much as I can. Um, so now note this car, for example. Let's focus on that. What lines on the car actually conform to this point of perspective? This line, uh, this line, the top, the, sorry, this line is side of the top, this line right around here. What lines do not conform? This line, this line, this line. They're irrelevant, okay? Now, when you look at it from above, I do want to go back into this kind of a thing. Let's say... We're looking at this very same scene from above. In fact, let me bring a fresh piece of paper. It's really inevitable to, to do stop and go into details because I do want to show you. So let's say we're looking at this from above. What we'll see is just the road and the car. So somewhere around here, okay? This car right around here in Tokyo, Japan. Okay, so we have the car here, we have this uh, separation, whatever that is, or you can see, uh, this separation. We're going to have that same thing here, maybe. And we're going to have this person walking, doesn't matter, this is the person. Two legs, okay. Now, when we lower our angle from this above view, we lower our angle, all of these lines start to taper. All of these parallel lines, so the road tapers, the car, some of its lines taper, okay, I'm going to do my best here, see, the car starts tapering, now these lines aren't parallel to these lines, so they're not going to taper as much, okay, they're not going to taper almost at all in this example, and that's this side of the car, after you have this kind of a building block, you can add the more complex structures. And that's how I do this. But this is not really a practical lesson on drawing stuff like perspective, drawing complex objects in perspective. That's not the point, so I'm not going to do that for now. But hopefully that uh, drives the point home of how the, these cars behave, quote unquote, in perspective. Now, if you just joined, uh, let me know in the chat who you are, where you're from. I see we have Christy Wiley from Nashville, Tennessee, USA. Thank you so much for joining. And if you still haven't smashed the like button, please do press it. Press it ever so gently. Um, I'd really appreciate it. It just makes sure that more people see the live stream. So thank you for that. Uh, I can always count on you. And we have this Uniqlo. Even the sign for the Uniqlo store follows that same concept. It is in perspective. Now, it's funny how this lesson turned out better than I expected because of the print quality and it being slightly glossy. You can see my lines so clearly on it. So that's perfect. I wasn't planning that far uh, out. And if I had have used this, you wouldn't see anything. So almost anything. So, yeah. So another cityscape, one point perspective. Now, let's talk about an interesting concept that has to do with the horizon line and hello there crispy good morning uh, greetings from germany thank you for joining in now it's getting a little colder so let me make this because as soon as i start live streaming my body temperature goes up because of the energy so horizon line now 
this here, most people can kind of tell that this is the horizon line, okay? And it's somewhere around here. Now, this may be confusing. Maybe we're looking at just clouds. I don't know. I'm going to take that risk, okay? Or let me show you another example. Horizon line, okay? Right around here. Now, the horizon line is greatly influenced by our point of view, where we stand. And I'm going to explain it in one simple way that I think people find useful. And then I'm going to show you some examples that you'll better understand. Okay. And um, hello, Sergio Gonzalez. Gaita, good morning to everyone from Chile. I just got here also. Thank you so much for joining uh, Turkey. I was I was supposed to. Okay. So Replicana is from Turkey. Vanessa Hugens uh, from Belgium. Cool. Wow. We have a representation from uh, a lot of places. So horizon line and I'm just talking about perspective to anyone who joins I'm talking about one point perspective the horizon line I just showed a few simplified examples of one point perspective that you can see here uh, and now we're talking about the horizon line which is an important concept so the horizon line where we see it in the scene will depend on our point of uh, view okay so our pub is gonna influence the horizon line so Right now, we're just looking at the horizon line at, at, at some kind of a height. I don't know where we're standing, but here's an important thing to understand. The thing that crosses the horizon line is our point of view's height. Let me say that again. The thing that crosses the horizon line is the thing that's at our height. Well, let me show you. Imagine there's a super duper huge tall antenna popping out from the clouds. And it gets all the way up to here. It'll probably look more something like this. Doesn't matter. <laughs> An antenna, okay? Probably more like this thing. What's our height? What's our point of view's height? Right here. If we were to climb this antenna, climb, 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 this person standing here is the same height as us. The person standing on this cliff is the same height is us. Maybe they're lifting their hands to say hi. Okay, the thing that cuts through the horizon line, if we'd have a bird here, this bird is taller than us. This bird is not taller, I mean higher than us. This bird is lower than us. And this bird is exactly our height. Now, the higher we go, the higher the horizon line will become. Think about it. The higher we go, if we go higher, we'll get to this bird's height and the horizon line will move with it. It's very counterintuitive. So the only way of understanding it is by me showing you examples. Okay, so let's look at a few examples. Example number one. No, that's not a good one. Example number one. See this cute horse. Now, where is the horizon line? I ask you. If you're having a hard time finding it, it's basically where the sky and land meet. Now, I am not a rocket scientist, but I think it's somewhere around here. Okay? And that's the level of accuracy you really need for this kind of a thing. That's the horizon line. Now, look at the thing that cuts through the horizon line. It's the horse's legs, funny enough. We're currently on the ground. The camera is placed on the ground. That's a camera. It's, it's placed like this on the ground. And it's taking a photo of this horse. Okay? It's really important to understand. Where is the horizon line? Very low. Because our point of view is very low. I know that sounds strange, but bear with me, okay? That's how it works. So when we're looking at things from a very low angle, we're looking above, we're looking at things that are mainly taller than us, like this horse looking at us from above. Now, if you're looking in the middle, you're kind of in the middle. We're, we're looking at the scene like straight ahead. We're not looking from below, exceptionally not from above. Now I do have an example for a bit of a higher angle. Higher angle and look at where the horizon line is. It's at the taller third, okay? That's important to remember. Where is it here? Like the fifth, something like this, lower fifth. So it's really, really important to remember. When the angle is lower, the horizon line goes down. When the angle is 
higher, basically, the horizon line goes up. Now, even if you don't understand it, here's something intuitive to have in mind, okay? Uh, and I'm going to address some of the chats in just a moment. When you're looking at this scene, if I want to show that I'm looking from above, I want to show everything that's below, I'm going to need a lot of room under the horizon line to show all of the people that are below, okay? All of these people, maybe one is really close to us. Maybe one is really far from us, but I need all that place from under the horizon line when I'm higher. Now, when I'm lower, lower angle, I want to show everything that's above me, right? So a lower angle means a low horizon line and showing how tall all the trees are or all the buildings are, whatever it is you're drawing, okay? That's the kind of paradox. Higher POV, higher horizon line. Lower POV, lower horizon line. Okay? All there is to it. So let's look at some of these examples and talk about it. And let me see what you're saying. And hopefully the people who missed the beginning, uh, you didn't, didn't miss too much. Uh, we have 83 people in the house. Thank you so much. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, we're going up in numbers. Um, let's see, doo, 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 doo. oh, a bunch of messages, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Leah's Kitchen, hi from Tiberias, Treasure Trove, hello from India too. Ink Canvas, hi, I'm from, I'm, I am Avan Avantika from India, Crispy, such a lovely teacher you are, I send you a virtual hug. Thank you, virtual hugs to everyone here, I really appreciate it, uh, COVID safe. Tucson Tom, hi from Tucson, Claudia KZN, very interesting, thank you, from South Africa. And I do, I do want you to uh, tell me if something is boring because I'm just not going to talk about it much in the future. I know most people are interested uh, more in the painting aspect. So let me know. But I do think these uh, topics are important. Okay. Uh, we have HD Zlaw. One. Thanks, Liron from Chicago. Great lesson. Thank you. Paris D. Black. Hey, Liron. It is Paris in Columbus, Ohio. So there is Paris in Columbus. Oh, ah, okay. So you're Paris in Columbus, Ohio. Sorry, got that confused. I forgot about the live demos on Thursday. Yeah, no worries. Uh, Birgit, okay, that explains the horses. Look, yeah, the horse is kind of um, feeling like it's better than us. Definitely looking down at us. Um, Paris, don't worry about the autocorrect. That's very a very common one. Unfortunately, there's the Luton Airport, so everyone gets that wrong. Uh, Galchak, horse point of example, uh, point of view, amazing example. Thank you. Senior Forbes says, "Lol, Triveni Praveen. Hi, I'm from I'm Triveni from Bangalore, India. Helen Gillis. I uh, missed the start. No worries. I'm gonna summarize it all in just a few moments. Replicana, you explained it so well. Easy to understand, even a bit too easy. Perfect. Uh, Helen Gillis, I need easy." Um, I wish there was some sort of drone video for this, uh, Treasure Trove says. Yeah, we, we may look at one together, if, if that's the thing that will help. Um, sounds great, Helen says, from England. Another name I can't read, unfortunately, that's Greek. Uh, hey there, from Andros Island, Greek. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, sorry about that. Natalie Kelly, drawing basics are foundation, foundational and needed, indeed. Um, MDPT, enjoying, uh, enjoy, uh, enjoying from North, okay, North California. Ellen Gillis, love that photo. Uh, the house is very English, indeed. Eldon Summers, I find it super interesting. I knew the very basis, but there's so much to uh, more to Horizon Line. Yes, yes, exactly. JSA drawing. Wait, there's no way that's a painting. Well, it's not a painting. It's actually all reference photos. Uh, Natural Inspirations, Art Studio. Hi, Liron. Thank you for doing this topic. So for anyone new who joined, we were talking about perspective. Now we're talking about Horizon Line. And we were just, I was just mentioning this rule, kind of a loose rule for you, that the higher our point of view, the higher the horizon line is, the lower our point of view, the lower the horizon line is. Okay, and I'm going to repeat these concepts all throughout this lesson, so don't worry about it. So here we have something very interesting going on. What happens here, and this is what I would guess, is we're actually just a person standing somewhere around here. We're not looking at the scene from a height point of view, well, I'm going to write it here, point of view that's taller than a person. We're actually at a person's height. We may even be lower. The thing is, this is a strong recline. It goes down. You see it goes down. The street goes down. So we're looking at this view from kind of above. So the horizon line went a little up. But the, the reason why we're looking at it from above is actually that all of this village or whatever that is, is very high. 
It's very tall. It has a, a, a like above sea level height, probably. Okay. Uh, now look at all these uh, different rooftops. These all. The, this is a little complex, okay? They all point in different directions, so you don't get one uh, um, vanishing point, okay? These all point in very different directions. However, these two lines are probably safe to assume kind of parallel because it's the same rooftop. Same goes for this rooftop, this part and this part. They all they point to the same vanishing point, okay? But that's a little more complex. We'll, we'll let it go for now. But basically, we're looking at this scene from above, probably because this village we're standing in is so tall that we see all of this. Look at how much we see from the view, because we're so tall. Compare that to the horse. How much do we see from the view here? Nothing. Okay, really nothing. So that's another thing to have in mind. Let's look at another one. Do you always need to know perspective? Not necessarily. For example, look at this, and I know it's rather dark, so my apologies about that, but this is very far away from us so what happens is again remember it's all about distances things that are closer to us appear to be larger and things that are farther from us appear to be smaller because all of this in the grand scheme of things all of this castle is very far away from us perspective does not play an important role most of these lines are actually kind of parallel okay they don't really go to a vanishing point they are if you want to be super accurate these lines taper just a bit because always ask yourself, what's closer to me? That thing should appear to be larger. Now, what's closer to us? This edge of the castle or this edge of the castle? It's a bit hard to say, but because this is a corner, I would guess, just guess, because I do recognize some tapering that this side is closer to us because it's very the answer is actually very clear we can see this side so it means that it's turned in space in a way that this corner is closer than that corner so these lines are not going to be perfectly parallel but rather they're going to fan just like we've seen in other scenes they're fanning towards a vanishing point but the vanishing point is so far to the right that it becomes not as important compare that to I want to find a really clear example of this. Compare that to this kind of a thing here, where this part of the building is so much, this thing here is so much closer to us than this thing here. So you get this amazing tapering. These lines don't go as far from us as these lines, okay? They, they don't move away from us. So they're essentially parallel. And to add to that, they're very far away from us. Things that are farther away from us are going to show less perspective. So that's something I want you to have in mind. And very often these scenes and scenes of nature are very popular because they don't require too much, um, too much uh, perspective knowledge. Now I do want to show you something. Please consider this. Let's say we're getting closer to the castle and we're looking at it slightly from the left. Okay. So somewhere around here, let me get myself off of this scene here so you can better see, okay? Let's consider this idea. We're looking at the castle slightly more from the left. What will happen is these lines, this corner, will start to taper away from us all the way to the other corner. This will also, and I obviously changed the angle a bit. Let me redo that without changing the angle. I really want you to understand this example. So let's not change the angle. Forget about that. Fresh start. This wall of the castle is here and it's closer to us. So instead of this line going, these lines going straight, one is gonna go a bit like this. The other one's gonna go a bit like that, all the way to the edge that's farther from us. What about this left side? It's probably gonna, and it's probably going to be shorter, to be honest with you. It's probably going to end here. Okay? Forget about this thing. The other side is also going to taper just slightly because we got closer to it. And you get this lovely, clearer structure. The taller wall is going to go a little more at an angle like this. See? And this is the wall with the, what do you call these things? I forgot. Okay? 
Da, 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 da. And they also get smaller the farther they move away from. This is the other side of that wall, like this. And the tower, it's going to go like this. And this is one of the towers and another one of the towers. And it's not perfect, but you get the point. See, I'm translating this to a bit of a stronger angle because we're closer. Okay? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I, think, I think it does. Now, sometimes it's hard to understand. So if we just imagine there's um, a light source on the scene, it's going to make more sense. So let me show you. Let's imagine that the light comes from this side. Okay? Everything that's on the left side is going to be shaded. So this wall is in the shadow. This wall is in the shadow. This wall is in the shadow. And in case I'm not clear, let me show you what I actually drew. I actually drew, redrew, and let's move this. And I am ruthless. May says Ruth is in the living room. As always, she doesn't like when I live stream. She just walks out the room disrespectfully. So basically, I'm redrawing this castle at a closer distance to it and a bit more at an angle so that you do get this um, perspective effect. Okay? Same light source, by the way. And all of these towers are going to appear to taper as well. Okay, I hope that makes sense. We're going to have a bunch of windows maybe on the castle walls and a bunch of stuff here and there. And they're also going to taper. Look at the pattern. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Just translated it into something uh, that's much better. I should have hold it, held it like this. You see? Just closer at a bit more at an angle. The farther the object is, the more the less significant perspective the less significant perspective becomes let's do another kind of imaginary exercise let's say we have this exact same scene but instead of the castle taking up this much space it's much more in the distance okay this is our castle castle just this itty bitty thing here do you think anyone can actually see perspective on this thing nah you'll probably get this kind of a very hazy effect. Maybe this is going to be a little darker. The mountains in the background are going to be a little lighter. You won't see anything. So the farther it is, the less perspective is actually important. Okay, I want you to have that in mind. I'm going to keep this because I may need it in just a moment. Now I want to show you something. I want to show you a very common mistake people make. Very common. Okay, let's see what you're writing in the chat and if you have any questions. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. Okay, I'm going to address these really fast. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, there's no way that's painting. I read that. Hi, Laurent. Thank you for doing this topic. Thank you so much, Natural, Natural Inspiration Art Studio. Uh, we have Sna from India. We have Joanna Yu, hoping for an easy demo of doing perspective by doing street views. We will do that. Uh, Senior Frog. Or Senor Frog. Sorry, I'm from England too, Ellen. Hi, Frog. I'm from India. This one's so good. Thank you so much for Plicana. Mary C. I will try to catch up with this later. Best wishes. Thank you so much for joining, Mary. Anthony Joseph. Hi. Hope to learn new things. Uh, Wesson Monsieur. Highly run from Louisiana, USA. The perspective section in your How to Sketchbook was the first time this started to click for me. I'm really happy to hear. Uh, thank you so much, Wesson. I'm really, uh, really happy. I'm really happy to hear that because uh, it's something I really thought about how to teach. Uh, there are people that are better than me at complex perspective, but I tried getting it to a point where you can actually understand it. Uh, Replicana, it somewhat bothers me when you put marker on the picture, though. So think about it this way. This is the cheapest printer paper ever, Replicana. It's super cheap. There's nothing lost here, hopefully. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Uh, May asks, what about the coloring difference between what's closer to what's not? So I think May asks about the, the color and how that changes with distance. And that's a good topic for a future live because I did a few videos on it. Things that are closer to us will usually have stronger colors, darker colors, more saturated colors. While in the distance, there's the atmospheric at, uh, perspective and effect. So the blues are more prominent, the yellows and reds, not as much. So you'll get gray blues. I hope it makes sense, May. I hope you learned something new. <laughs> Replicant, a good question. Uh, indeed, a good question. Natural Inspiration Art Studio. Is there a way to determine perspective lines in nature scenes? Yes, we'll do that. And by the way, I did show a quick example of that. Here. Uh, let's answer that question. Look at the mountain ridge here. It pretty much conforms to perspective. 
you see this is I bet you this goes on like I'm gonna show you sorry if this is a bit messy this is real life here but I bet you that this ridge is probably doing something like this even taller so look at this look at this trend here this graph even the mountains here just because of this ridge you can tell there's perspective now I understand the question it's a little more complex than that uh, natural inspirations art studio let me give you another take on it whenever you're uncertain just ask yourself what's closer to me and what's farther from me this mountain is obviously closer to us than this mountain here so this is probably going to be bigger and this is going to be smaller and then you look for that trend see what i'm saying i hope that makes sense marie van der wick hello from british columbia canada thank you for doing this you got it uh what is ruth doing in the meanwhile yeah she's being ruthless at the moment <laughs> um yeah okay so stephanie corral yes the castle example makes sense too thank you mark ohio doesn't the castle have two vanishing points to the left and to the right mark you are correct um we still haven't talked about it so i didn't want to make it more complex um it does we're going to talk about two points perspective in just a moment i actually don't have a good picture for it at the moment but i will explain it okay but for now let's stick to one point perspective donna bowman this is great thank you replicana you're being very clear thank you it makes sense treasure trove amazing class thank you so much thank you thank you for joining in we have over 100 people celebration thank you to anyone who dropped a like that's amazing uh john you have to go i'm so sorry my friend uh hopefully you've got a lot of value um watch the replay as always rsi what about fish eye perspective while well, everything uh looks being uh stretched all uh, it all looks bent so fish eye perspective is very interesting what actually happens in fish eye is you kind of get the same let me try and explain so if you have one point perspective like a street you'll get all of these lines coming out of the vanishing point okay what happens with fish eye is that it all gets skewed in a way what you'll get is well let me think about it um how do i want to it's a larger angle for sure i actually have a good example so let's imagine you're looking at this building this is a bit more advanced so maybe i should keep it for later but this is a two-point perspective basically you're looking at a structure this is the right side this is the left side what fish eye does is it makes perspective be non-linear so instead of getting this transition from small to large you'll get a weird transition like that so this building would look maybe more something like this you get what i'm saying here i hope that makes sense it kind of contorts perspective to be non-linear as well it's very advanced i think we'll talk about it in the end um i hope to remember to remember that i'm gonna write it down for myself here's our notepad um fish eye fish eye we may get to it okay it's a bit more complex and honestly i don't have a perfect explanation of it it's just something you have to observe a lot uh but yeah uh let's see do, 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 do. Rishav, any book recommendations to learn um on perspective especially for the advanced stuff i actually don't have a good book to recommend there's just a bunch of information online for free so i would check that out uh Leroy, you're an amazing teacher just subscribe natural inspiration art studio thank you so much so did you discover me through this live thank you um Rinu Tika, hello you're really great from india thank you replicana okay i also use the cheapest printer paper and sketching good to hear uh triveni pravan uh, isn't this two point yes it is uh replicana i joined your channel for this thank you so much uh marjorie johnson ah so uh good idea i'm going to get out some of my reference photos and exactly and put a clear film over and use a, a water marker to draw perspective lines just as an exercise it's a great exercise i'm actually surprised i haven't recommended it before now i want to show you something very interesting look at this like kind of a quick tip to improve your art whether it's painting sketching drawing whatever you do a very common mistake is to mess up the curves now let me explain so look at these two lines here this is a one point perspective in a way but the road is curvy so let's look at what we got here these two parts of the road are parallel and hopefully you understand that it's a bit of a complex thing as well but you see this moves here this moves here and they kind of meet in this vanishing point okay because the road moves together okay it moves like this then like that and then away from us okay like so these two lines also 
move towards some kind of a vanishing point around there. Okay, now, a very common mistake, and even if you don't fully understand the concepts, you may understand what I mean, is to make the curves larger. So I see a lot of people do this all the time. So what will happen is someone will want to draw a, a wavy kind of road. So they see this curve and they think to themselves, oh, it's a curve. So they draw it maybe something like this. You see this? Now, look at how we essentially lost the sense of depth here. And this is very common. There is a tendency to draw things the way you know they look. Now, you know that this road has two parallel lines. You know that. So f the mind is trying to move in that direction. And what ends up happening is you end up making these lines too parallel and you don't get, like, look at this shape. I'm going to do something uh, improvised here. I want you to look at this shape once I've, I'll flip the, the paper. And it's gonna, it may surprise you. You see this? Look at this weird shape. Because the road is farther here, it gets smaller. And in order to get it smaller, you have to squeeze it. If you go and do something like this, you know that's a curve, so you end up doing it too curvy. You lose that sense of dynamic movement onto the horizon line. Okay, that's a very common mistake I see a lot of people make. I hope that makes sense. Um, I'm going to show you another iteration of it. Hopefully, it'll make sense. And if not, we're we're going to just let it go or talk about it again later. But I see a lot of people make this mistake as well. They want to draw a road, and they do the road like this. Or maybe like this. Something like this. They go at a higher angle. Again, it's the symptom of the same problem of going a higher angle when it's not there really. And what you need to do is really consider if that's my horizon line, how do I make the road conform to that? So let's say I have this zigzag road. I'm not gonna go on a strong curve. I'm gonna go on a very sharp turn. You see on a very sharp turn. See? That's how it works. You really need to start thinking that kind of a snake-like style. Now, if the point of view is higher, and I'm gonna show you an example of that as well, Yes, it will look like this. And you will have a car here. And then, and I know it's just a very simplified version of maybe a truck. And another car there. And yes, it's all going to be fine and dandy. But for the most part, this is the thing you'll encounter more. Because that's almost a drone angle. Like someone said drone. That's almost similar to that. Just something to have in mind, okay? I see a lot of people accidentally going at a higher angle. Observe the, the horizon line and just look at the shapes. I know it's hard, it's, it's a bit hard to explain, but I did want to stop and talk a bit about that concept, okay? It's very common for people to uh, make the curves very curvy, when in fact, look at this sharpness of angle here. Very sharp. And this is like a 90 degree, okay? So you want to pay attention to these things. Okay, because you may imagine this as a kind of a rounded angle, when in fact it's kind of like this. Okay, so a bit of a surprising uh, thing sometimes we encounter. I want to show you another example of this real quick. See these lines? Now, imagine we're looking at this from above. It's like a, a lake or whatever. If we look at this lake from a very high angle, from, like from above, directly from above, see this? Um, you see this, it goes like that, and then it connects here, and it goes like this, all the way to the left, and then it comes right around here. Now, we don't really know what's going on in the edges, but just to show you an example. So from above, what would this look like? Maybe it's going to look more like this. This part here is just rounded, and then it goes back. And it's kind of like this. It's a body of water. Okay? Now, because of the angle, we actually can't see this inner part. Because imagine we're going lower. That's when this slight turn becomes more important. You see? 
the point is, it doesn't really matter. What's important is squeeze those shapes. Remember, when you're looking from a lower angle or a, even a higher, no, a lower angle, sorry. Uh, I sorry, I'm sorry, uh, a lower angle. You got this low angle, you have to conform things to that angle, okay? Same if you have this lake and you have this m nice little um, mountain ridge. Flat, 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 flat. Because very often I see people making these curves way too strong. Like if you go like this, you're going to lose all the feeling. Because this has to be very flat. Okay, in theory, once you get to water level, it's just going to be a flat line. You get it? Because the water surface is flat. So just something to have in mind. Okay? And hopefully if we have time, we're going to talk about some more advanced concepts like uh, cross contour lines and a bunch of... <laughs> more complex things. I don't know. It, it looks like it's going to take a while, which I'm, I'm fine with. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, so I'm, I'm cool with that. The longer, the better this demo is. Now, I want to show you something a little simpler. Um, let's see what you say before we get to this next beautiful example. Vuk uh, Opakik, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm watching your live for the first time. It's amazing. So helpful. I watched you your draw painting video and I love that. Uh, video, thank you so much. Oh, yeah, the drop, the water drop. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm learning, says Vanessa Hugen. I'm happy to hear. U.S. Grant, love your videos. Thank you. Kit Kito, that's exactly my problem. Yeah, so so once you realize it's a problem, you know what to look for. I, I'm just, I know because so many people, I see this. When people send me uh, uh, paintings for review, I see it all the time, okay? Um, Joed Metal, amazing teacher. Thank you for taking the time for the tutorials, going through um, cancer treatment, and it helps with spending my day watching and learning. Wow, okay, so um, just good luck with that. I send you the best like health uh, health and good regards uh, coming your way, lots of blessings. Um, I hope you'll get through it. Um, if you wanna share more, feel free to. Um, and yeah, it's, it's tough, yeah, it's tough, so, but I'm, uh, I'm happy you're going through treatment. Hopefully you'll get better. Uh, Replicana, you're the best in explaining perspective. Thank you. Uh, that's Twin Peaks, okay? Uh, uh, Senor Frog, hope you're doing well. Okay, thank you everyone who's, who blesses uh, Joed. Um, Blue Fire, hi, Replicana, be well. Rishav, just a quick question. Did you have career doubt when you were first stepping into the field of art? If so, how did you handle that? I just knew what I wanted to do, so I just went for it. Honestly, um, I didn't have many fears because luckily I was still young, I didn't have a lot of responsibilities and I just felt like that was the right timing to try something that's a little more risky. Um, better sooner than later when you have a long horizon and a lot of time to change careers, which by the way, I believe a lot of people that are older and believe they don't have time actually have that time. Um, the world is changing, things move very fast and new opportunities open up every day. Uh, I just knew that that was what I wanted to uh, do, and I, I knew I'm going to give it a try. Um, and nothing could stop me, really, I think. A lot of people uh, like said that uh, it's very risky or that they want me to do something else, but I didn't let any of that stop me. So, uh, And with time, it took about seven years or six years to feel comfortable with what I'm doing financially, and, and now it's, it, hopefully it will keep improving, uh, but I, I feel like I'm in a good place. If you know that you want to try something out, you're young enough, you have the, the opportunity. Um, you're young enough, like you're not 90, anything under 90. Even when you're 90, honestly, you can do a lot, I guess. But um, I think a lot of it has to do with balance. Like if you really have to find a job, like most people do, I believe, you just find a job and you do it on the side as much as you can, as much as you can, and with time you slowly transition to that being the full thing, full-time thing, if possible. Uh, but but I also worked simultaneously at a company for about a year, not not much for a year. Um, uh, RSI, I always get difficulty to fill an empty space. Not sure is it my choosing uh, point of view being sucked, choosing perspective or my bad composition. Liran, what should I do? Um, so my tip for you, very easy, very simple. Just choose a scene that looks good to you. If you choose a scene that looks good to you, you'll have a, a, and try to draw that like from reference. It's not going to be an empty space to fill, really. You'll start with the large shapes, move on to the smaller shapes and the details. Gradually, everything has its own stage. And that's how you fill in the page, uh, hopefully. Use reference, a lot of references. Let me know if uh, that addresses the question. If not, I'll answer any follow-ups. 
Dave, how long did it take you to reach your first thousand subscribers? Um, on YouTube, it took a long time. In the beginning, uh, it takes a long time. That's always how it goes. Let me show you a, a perspective demonstration. That's the growth on anything. Kind of goes like this, like that, like this, like that. That's that's how my channel, and it probably mine looked more like this. <laughs> I had a huge crash at some point. Um, that's how it is with all of these things. Now, if you're stuck here for what you perceive to be too long time, uh, sorry, I need to draw the baseline. If you're stuck here for what you perceive to be too long of a time, like, I don't know, a decade, because a year is very, very, um, like, it makes sense to me, a year, two years. I think it took me, like, if this is the thousand sub point, I think that took, like, two years, and then that's, like, two years later, you're already at kind of a new baseline, and that's, like, four or five years later. So... It's just how it works, but if you're spending like another year and another year and you're stuck here, I think you need to ask yourself the question of what I could do that I'm not doing right now. Maybe you're not doing something you should be doing. You know, that's an important thing to, to ask yourself. Um, I think like we always get stuck in our habits and, and our tendencies and we, we can sometimes forget about like the, the grander picture. Uh, but feel free to send me an email or a message and I'll, I'll see what I can do. Maybe I can give you like personal feedback. Feel free to. Um, natural inspiration. I love the, your teaching style and the, the live video is great. Nice being a part of this art community. Yeah. Replica says I'm so old. No, you're not. Uh, you're never too old for anything. I finished my degree last year and it was 39. Like when I hear 39, that sounds super young to me. I don't know, 49 even. Okay, let's get to this one. So I was asked about nature and by the way everyone here check out dave dave lowe's channel um it's called get some color in your life just go check it out now uh it's a nice thing to do and maybe you'll find out a bunch of videos that you enjoy watching um i actually visited your channel channel a few times i just don't watch a lot of videos at the moment uh but i did visit a few times and there are some good stuff so go check it out um okay natural scene you know this is important how does perspective come to play in a natural scene Always have that idea in mind. Closer is bigger, farther is smaller. So this road here, this trail, even though it's not a perfect, um, it's not a perfect road that goes like that, it still has that going for it. See? Like so, okay? And remember to flatten those curves. Again, if you're if you're doing this, and that's a road that moves away from us, look at this. Please have that in mind. This is above view. This is us looking at the scene from above. Okay? Don't do that. Flatten those curves like I showed you earlier. So this goes like that, right? This is thick. This is thin. This is thick again. This is thin. Remember that. Okay? It's really important. It's what I was trying to say earlier. I think now I figured out a better way to explain it. And also, this should be thinner than this, by the way, if we're on that point. These lines that are not moving away from us, they turn, they're they turned away from us, so it, they appear to be thinner. That's really important. So we have that trail here. Thinner here, thinner here, wider here, wider here, and it's always getting smaller. That's one element already in perspective. Now, that's human-made. What about the trees? Look at them. These trees are thinner, smaller, farther. Look at this tree here. This is a very important tree. When I'm painting something like this scene, uh, this is the tree I'm going to look for. Why? Because it's right there between the thing that's much farther. The same for this group of trees. Well, look at these, and this just as an aside. These trees are important because what's behind them is much farther. The gap between these two trees, this one and this one, isn't too big. But when you're moving from this tree to this one, it's much smaller. It's smaller. These are small. These are small trees. Let me show you how I create a perspective in a natural scene, barely trying, okay? So this is the horizon line. Here's a tree. Here's a tree. Here are trees. Here are a bunch of trees. Here's another branch coming out of a tree. 
There's another tree a little closer to us. You see, you already feel this movement inside. Now, if I'm going to add a road to that, you get it to be even stronger. And then a horizon line that's a little clearer, you got it. Let's look at another example. Mountain Ridge. It's not going to be a perfect line, but it is going to be there. Okay, and maybe there's a road coming through here. See what I mean by that? And this is like a very mild perspective. Like, let's do a more extreme one. Uh, let's go lower with this winding kind of a road. And here's a mountain ridge. See, it's not as uh, straightforward necessarily, but it is there. It is there. And my problem with uh, just learning watercolor, and if you look at, for example, Joseph's book, which is course, which is great, he talks about a few very common compositions. So he talks about the A, I believe he called it, and then he talked about the S, which he calls Z. That's great, but learning it that way is kind of a gimmick. I want you to go beyond that and understand why it looks like that. Something very interesting that relates to making it thinner. Let me show you one more thing. Let's say you have a winding road like this one. The longer sides of it are going to be thin while, let me show you, while the parts that are move away from us more directly are going to be thicker. I'm going to repeat that. I know it's a bit complex. This is almost parallel to us. It doesn't move farther from us, but this does. So we get to see more of it. See here, we get to see more of the areas where it turns okay i hope it makes sense and if you drop in like a, uh, a mountain ridge here you're gonna make this entire part disappear behind the mountain look at this this is a cool composition just play around with it that's what i have to say about natural landscapes it is there. perspective is always at play as i wrote down here and you can't see always at play okay i hope it makes sense um let's see what you're saying here Okay, thank you, Liron. I am happy I could help Aras. Let me know if you have more questions about that. Uh, Senor Fro, hope your channel does well, Dave. Just check it out and subscribe. Wow, thank you so much to anyone who subscribes to Dave. Go now, subscribe. Shoot me an email, Dave. Yes, definitely. Uh, Replicana asks, how old are you, Liron? I'm 30. I turned 30 last April. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, James Baker, thanks, Liron. Talk about age. I'm 75 and still learning. Always, always. It's amazing. Stephanie Coral um, uh, says uh, to Dave, amazing artwork, great, great. Thank you to anyone who visits Dave's channel. So, like, the people here are the best. So nice, really. Let me move on to the next one. Now, this is a bit more complex. Before we do that, let's do two points perspective. Now, I don't have a good photo for that. I should have prepared one. <laughs> Let's see if I can find one on the fly. Uh, two points perspective. Let's, mm, where should I search? Let's see. Uh, building. Building. I'm just searching Pixabay for a picture of a building. I promise I'll find you a two point perspective. A good one. I want a good one. I don't want a crappy one. I want one that's very easy to understand. Surprising. I'm scrolling through them and I don't find many. But here's a good one of the uh, Parthenon in. Let's see here. This is another good one. Okay, okay. I got you covered. I got you covered. Um, so the question is, do I print it or do I actually... I'm going to print it because I need... I have to demonstrate. I have to show you. Like, I actually have to show you. Okay, so uh, bear with me as I do this. Um, because it is important and I wasn't properly prepared. So I'm going to uh, file, print, send it off to the printer. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's going to take a few moments, but hopefully it'll print. Let's see who is in the house. Kusum Shabong Art. Kusum Shabong Art. Enjoyed your session. Perspective is something no one deals with. How can I get in touch with you? Would love to have your feedback on my art. To have your feedback on my art. Um, okay, does it print? I think there is a problem with the printer. Um, so what you want to do is drop me an email and I'm going to share it now. So you want to email Liron at LironYan.com. Uh, that's my email address. That's the currently that's the best way to make sure I see. Um, why doesn't it work? Okay, pause. I don't know. 
we have uh, I'm, I'm screwing up okay oh um, why doesn't it work let me try black and white let me try printing black and white it's just making noises do you know that you're, when you're trying to print something and the printer just makes a bunch of noises it's low ink I know resume printing okay I'm gonna give it one go if not we're gonna bring the photo in and I'm gonna explain and I'm gonna redraw it here and so you'll understand it okay yeah it's gonna print black and white is gonna work <laughs> that's perfect um so yeah stephanie cora so uh kusuma shabong art um just again email me okay it's not gonna work i'm gonna bring it in uh email me at liron at liron Yan, and uh, i will do my best to uh, help as much as i can this is where i'm most likely to see uh your message because instagram i get so many messages now i hate it i really hate it uh that i can't like there's no way i can find the time uh, unfortunately okay so here we go here's the picture it's a barn and I'm gonna place it here. Let me get rid of my face for a moment, or let's just put it here. All right, so we got this barn. Now, what happens is, I'm gonna redraw it because I have no choice, really. So that's the lower. See, I also from it, like this line started off way too much like this and not enough like that. That everyone suffers from this. But in any and make, making lines longer than they should, that happens too. Uh, very often, so this should go probably like this. Okay, so we're talking about two-point perspective basically now. So we have this barn, this goes like that, like this. Okay, I think that's a good kind of basic structure. So what happens is, this is terrible. Will be wrong. This is terrible. That's that's me saying it to myself. That's not good. Okay, I'm gonna redo this. I'm sorry. I'm gonna redo this. I'm gonna bring more paper. Hold on a sec. I made one critical mistake, and that is I did not draw a horizon line, okay? So let me redo this with the pencil first. When you get cocky, you get these kinds of things happening. So this is the horizon line. Now, good. So this goes here, kind of like that. This moves somewhere towards this direction. We're going to try and see this goes around to here. This is like that, and I know this is incredibly uh, meaningless, all my blabber right now, sorry about that. And uh, this goes kind of like this, this co goes kind of like that. Because once, once you get to actually drawing the things, uh, you really need to focus. It's not like tracing on the image like I just showed you, it's just not as easy, okay? Uh, so yeah here we go okay that's much better that's much more accurate so I'm gonna go over this with uh, my markery pen okay so we have this barn or shed so what happens in two-point perspective is the only thing you really need to ask yourself is are there more than one set of parallel lines so if you have one set of parallel lines for example, this street view here, let me grab a pen. So you have this street view here, like so, and everything comes out of that vanishing point, okay? All of the buildings, whatever you're looking at, it's just mainly that. You have a bunch of people, I know it's very scratchy, but bear with me. A bunch of people and all of that. Now, what happens if we look at this building from this angle? of looking at this corner. Ask yourself, what's closer to us? To us, this line or this line? You'll probably answer this line. Look at the reference photo, okay? Is this line closer to us or that line? That line. So we essentially have two areas that need to taper, okay? I'm gonna show you a cube example in just a few moments. We'll make things uh, easier to understand, okay? I know it's a bit complex, but these lines move away from us. One set of parallel lines, which is uh, this part of the roof, this bottom part of the floor, a door or a window that's here, this line, this line, this line, this line. They all move away from us. Same for these lines. This roof of the barn, the bottom wall, the top of the roof, 
They all move away from us. So we have two different sets of parallel lines that we need to represent. Okay? What happens is, this is one, this is two, and you have to, you hear Ruth? Uh, May came home, so I'm going to open the door. It's going to take a moment. Back to two-point perspective, sorry about that. Um, May is home and Ruth is like ecstatic. So um, we have basically two sets of lines that are parallel we need to address. Now let me show you why, okay? So let's say we have uh, this thing here. Let me close the door. All right. <laughs> so we're looking at this barn from this angle. This moves away from us, this moves away from us. Now, previously, when we looked at the road, at the, at the street view, we were looking at it from an angle where the main, um, the main highlight, if you will, of the scene is the road and the buildings around it. You see? But once you look at things diagonally, that's when two-point perspective comes into play. So this corner is this corner here. And it's moving both these lines move away from us. And all of these have parallel lines to them. Like you have the roof here, it's parallel to this. You have the roof here, it's parallel to that. So you have to have these things in mind when you do this kind of a thing, okay? And this is how you get a two-point perspective scene. I know it may be like really hard. That's the thing I was demoing with the castle earlier. Let me show you. Uh, the castle was kind of the same thing, digging through my pile of uh, paper. Okay, there's a lot. I don't know if I'll even be able to find it now. Now, uh, let's see here. Yeah, so just one example. Sorry, I can't find the other one, but you see this tower, the, the castle earlier? It was this same concept, two-point perspective. Now, I hope that makes sense. Let me go over the questions for a moment, because I know this one is a bit more complex, and I know Quite a lot of you are going to have uh, your questions, so let's see. I'm supposed to be studying, but I guess I'm learning now, too. Uh, hello, everyone from Toronto, Canada, says um, uh, Maria Dika. Uh, let's see here. I missed a bunch of messages. Uh, okay, Stephanie says, uh, so glad to see the forest example. Love this. Pat Anderson, always informative. Thank you, Pat. Back early. Hi, Replicana. So rarely I follow live chats. This one is essential. Thank you so much. And we have like what, 120 people in the house. That's amazing. And, and it's a very technical and complex topic. So thank you, everyone who's here. Eldon Summers, I'm supposed to be studying, but I guess I'm learning now too. Joanne Lynn Agrian Mercer, first time watcher. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and I'm sorry if you missed some of the beginning. I'm going to demonstrate in just a few moments and it'll make more sense. I'm going to show you a couple of more interesting concepts. Uh, Snowflake, been subscribed for some time, but it's my first time catching your stream. I've been struggling to understand perspective for years after your explanation makes it so simple to understand. That's amazing. Stephanie says, I hate when the printer makes noises after it's finished too. Yeah, same here. It has a bunch of things to do, I guess. Uh, not today, Tennessee. Oh, okay. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, I get some, uh, too many messages. What a great problem to have. It is. I, I'm never complaining, Dave, about these things. Like because it's really. I can once in a while like sit down and reply to a bunch of them. I, it's definitely a a good problem to have. I would never go back. Like I would never trade it for anything. I'm really grateful for that. I just feel bad sometimes because if if you can't get to everyone, it's just some. It's really annoying to me. This is why I started doing these lives because we can just get a lot of questions in um, relatively fast. Um, Paris D. Black, on the verge of another lockdown, our numbers are very high. That's really bad. I'm working through your book on sketching people, and I plan to start your watercolor course. Thank you so much, Paris. I really appreciate it. Um, a bunch of uh, weather talk. Ruth gets what she wants. That's true. Um, Eileen, Ron, some sound is there. Are you going to post this live? I'm going to keep this live on uh, the channel. Don't worry. You can watch the replay if you missed the beginning. You can watch it not live right now. You can go back to the beginning. I will keep it up, I promise. Uh, Natalie Kelly, my phone is about to die, so thanks for another great session. Uh, yeah, we'll catch you on next Thursdays. Um, we have 
a bunch of stuff. How do I decide uh, the two? Uh, okay, yeah. How do you decide the two vanishing points? So, um, okay, and sorry, that's just how the live live streams are going to be. A lot of chat too. It has to has to be this way. Um, okay, okay. We're going to go back to the chat in just a few moments. Now, how do you decide on where the vanishing points are? To be honest, let's say this is the reference photo. First of all, this is something I have not mentioned uh, before, but one point perspective and two points perspective will be on the horizon line always. Okay, so and this is really important. I'll show you. I'll take bring back the examples. Just a moment. I want to show you. Uh, okay, so this is the best example I can show you, like this street view. The vanishing point is always going to be on the horizon line. And this is the same is true for this example. So if we have this house here, this barn here, if we work on connecting these lines, they're going to fall on the horizon line as well. Okay? It's very important. Same goes for the other side. If I made it accurate, then it will fall on the horizon line. You see? So that's the first step, deciding on where the horizon line is. Let me get some more papers. Probably should have expected that I'm going to need much more, but uh, that's fine. So let me show you. The first thing you want to decide on is where that horizon line is. And you can see it in the reference photo. So you set that up. Then you know that the vanishing point is on that. Okay, we just didn't get to how it all works together. But that's the, that's the main uh, way of doing that. Okay, you see? And then you have the mountain ridge, the power lines, whatever it is. Okay, um, same for a lower angle. First you decide on the horizon line, and then you put in the horse staring at you, okay? A very bad horse, very bad looking horse, okay? And you know that you're this short, not tall, okay? This low angle. Um, the thing is, you really have to look at these lines. So you, you have to look at all of these lines, connect them in your mind, or maybe on a scrap piece of paper, and then you'll figure out where it is. It's just a lot of experience and time. You have to keep practicing this, okay? Um, so let's move on to the next example. So now that we've kind of addressed two-point perspective, I know it's a bit more complex. I want to move on to another scene. And I want to show you three points perspective. Now, three points perspective is the coolest example I can give you. And this is a great example of that. When you ask yourself, how many sets of parallel lines are there here? Generally speaking, just try and, and find them for a moment. Uh, there are obviously three, because it's three-point perspective. There are probably more, but the main ones, the ones that are very dominant in the scene, where are they? Which lines are they? Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds. Think it through, okay? And look at the roads, look at the buildings, figure out what things look like. You will get it. And I'm going to show you with the cube example in just a few moments. You will understand it, okay? So I think we can uh, do it. One road... This road is going away from us. It's subtle, but it is. We're looking down at this point, and we're looking into more of a distance. And sorry, let me get rid of this one here. Uh, no, not this, this. And this is a little farther. So we already found one, two. So that's one set of parallel lines. And let me draw it. Let me do this. This is going to be fun. So we have one set that goes kind of like this, OK? Now, we can find a bunch of lines that match this. This building here is parallel to the road, so it also goes at that same trend. This building goes the same trend. This side of the building goes the same trend. This edge of the building goes the same, same thing. That's one, all of these lines. Now, where's the second one? What's another thing that's moving away from us? This road, also moving away from us. So this line of the road this line of the road top of those buildings bottom of those buildings side of this building side of that building okay side of this building so this is essentially the part where it's 
two-point perspective for a few moments, okay? For a few moments, this is just a two-point perspective, all of these lines. But there is one more set of parallel lines that moves greatly away from us. It's the most significant one here that moves completely away from us. And by the way, these are on the horizon line as well. So just to come a full circle, if you continue these all the way to their meeting point, which is very far here, very far there, you'll find a horizon line very to be very tall. Why? Because we're looking at it from above. And remember, high angle, tall horizon line. Low angle, like the horse, low horizon line. So see how it all connects? I hope that makes sense. But where is that third set of parallel lines? Where is it? What's closer to us? Much more, much significantly closer, and what's significantly farther? We're looking at it from above. So, look at this building. This part of the building is closer to us than the bottom of the building. So this also line, this line also moves away from us. Okay. What other line does that? These lines that are parallel to that line, right here, these lines here, these lines move towards or away from us, depending on how you want to look at it, doesn't matter. You see, these lines move away from us, this line moves away from us, this line moves away from us. So we get an, a whole network of lines moving away from us. So what we essentially got here is three points perspective with two being on the horizon line somewhere in the top corners and one being right around here okay i'm gonna let that marinate while we have a ruth cameo <laughs> oh, sorry there we go <laughs> the usual <laughs> whoopee Come on. the usual cameo Hello. Go. Go. <laughs> <I'm not in> <laughs> okay, yeah. so a brief break here. <laughs> I'm gonna rearrange stuff. Okay, okay. So yeah, we were at the at the apex of learning about this the three point perspective. So look at what we have here. We have three sets of parallel lines that are very major and very important in the scene. One two, three, okay? And again, and let me show you a simplified version, if you will. Let me show you. So if we have this scene, and it's very small on purpose, and then we have this set of parallel lines, see? We have this set of parallel lines, and we have this set of parallel lines. Look at their continuation. This set goes in that direction, this set goes in that direction, this set goes in that direction. If we were to continue these lines all the way, we'll get the horizon line very far in the distance. And these are kind of imaginary, they're into the earth in this example. And if we have a building, it's going to be one side of the building, another side of the building, and the part that vanishes downwards. And this is essentially a building we're looking at from above. Okay, let me go over it with a stronger line. See, and that's three points perspective. That's all there is to it. In this example, and this is what I think always will happen. Two vanishing points on the horizon line, one not on the horizon line, either below it or above it. Now. This will vary greatly, okay? There are plenty of types of scenes. There are plenty of elements that are diagonal within a scene. For example, even if we just look at the shed from earlier, the barn, the rooftop had its own kind of uh, vanishing point up there while the rest of it was kind of like this. You see, the rooftop had a different vanishing point. There is a lot of complexity that goes into this, but this is the main idea. Two points on the horizon line, one at the bottom or at the top. We're going to see an example for the top as well in just a moment. Let me address the chat. Let's see what people write down here. 
Um, we have Teja Sunil Sangala that says, please take my name. I guess you want me to say your name. So here you go. A shout out. You got it. Uh, let's go over some of the chats that I missed. Um, oh, we have ZS in the house. Thank you for joining. Um, okay, a bunch of messages. How do you decide the two vanishing point? Too much chat. Uh, loser pro animation. Can you please provide full anatomy 3D? Well, that'll happen someday. Please teach me drawing clouds and see. That'll happen someday. To some Tom, great lesson. One I need to save for future references when I have problems with perspective. I'm going to add this one to my perspective playlist. Okay, it's going to be on the perspective drawing playlist as well. Uh, and Diego, live yield wasted time with dogs and problem. Mm. I'm sorry, Anne, if, you, if it's not, if live stream is not for you, don't. Feel free to watch it later faster or I have a bunch of I have enough videos that are just more to the point. Salil Chatter G. Okay, thanks, man. Mark Ohio, not sure if you said this, but often the vanishing points for two-point perspective are off the edge of paper. Exactly. Yes, that is correct. That's exactly the case we had here. Uh, Mario Fernandez, hi from Costa Rica. ZS, how do you keep organized your artworks and stuff? I don't. It's just a big mess. I'm, I'm serious. I have a bunch of paintings all over the place. Um, I put them in like either binders or folders but it's not as organized <laughs> stephanie corral okay connecting those lines made the two-point perspective make more sense i'm happy to hear i know it's it wasn't the best uh example but um but hopefully it still gets the point across salil says how to identify a horizon line um basically it's where the sky meets the earth um and again if our point of view is higher then the horizon line is going to be higher as well i sh i showed it earlier uh, if you go back, um, let, let me just show it real quick once again, because it is quite important. I do want to show you just the force. Already I have a big mess here, but that's one, and that's two. Okay, so for anyone who missed this important part about how to know where the horizon line is, first intuitively you see it, but also when our point of view is high, the horizon line is going to move up because we see more of the ground. And when our point of view is uh, low, the horizon line is going to be down because we see more of the sky and what's above us. Okay? That's the main rule you want to follow. I think I wrote it down on a different piece of paper, but I hope that makes sense. And always, 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 when you're uncertain, look at the reference photo, observe it, study it, think about it. It's not going to be intuitive at first, but you will get it with time. Okay? It's not easy, uh, but you will get it. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. No worries, Salil. It's fine that you missed it. Um, I wanted to repeat it. Um, is where it's going for me. I recommend rewatching. Control. I went. I went to art school, but my teacher never explained this in a way that was as clear as the way you're teaching. Thank you. You got it. Um, Garden to sky. Third perspective. We talked about that. This should be a weekly thing. A bit patil. It is. I'm doing this almost every Thursday. So join me. When you use the marker, it does make sense for the third point perspective. Your dog, I love your dog, Ruth, gets a lot of love here. Um, let's see. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Marjorie Johnson, I know a college that you should teach at here, so much better. Thank you. Um, Fernando, my name. <laughs> okay, Fernando, you say to Ruth that your name is Fernando. I'll, I'll uh, tell her hi from you. Uh, Daiji Shinomori, just lurking and have you in the background while I work, but I love the lesson on perspective. They're really helpful. We don't get these kind of lessons easily, so I really appreciate these lives. Thank you. Thank you so much. And these aren't easy to teach as well because there's a lot of technical stuff involved, um, and I, I'm happy to hear that the, the message does come across. So let me just reconclude the three-point perspective thing. With time, you'll understand, and you'll, you'll be able to do it much more easily from your imagination. But imagine this again. You look at the reference photo and you see a bunch of lines that move away from you. Just start analyzing it slowly and you will get it. One set of lines is this road. You can see it. Now, all you have to imagine is that the lines are fanning out. You don't have to be super accurate about it. it it's okay if you get it a bit wrong, but just make sure that you fan them out. See? The angle changes ever so slightly. It's just a fan. Same goes for the other side. It's just a fan, okay? And lastly, you'll either have something above or below. In this example, it's below. And this one's easier because it's actually within the scene. It's actually here. 
rather than way outside, okay? Or it's maybe a little outside, that's fine. You just draw these lines fanning out from the vanishing point, and that's all there is to it. If you connect these lines in any of these locations, you'll get a three-dimensional building. Let me show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's very subtle. Nine. That's it. Another one. Let's do an easier one that you can really see. Um, let's just, let's help ourselves with that. So let's do this and this and this. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You see? All of these are going to produce the same kind of effect. It's buildings from above, it's cubes from above, whatever it is, bam, you got it. Now, let's look at a similar example, three-point perspective, but this time we're looking from below. Now, remember, when we look from above, the horizon line is much taller because we see more of the land. What's going to happen if we look from below? The horizon line is going to be much lower because we're looking more towards the sky. So what do I have here for you? This one. Okay, look at this beautiful, beautiful scene. I could paint this, it could be fun. Same concept, only the other way around. And it's literally the other way around. Like, let me show you. If you just flip it over, you'll get the same thing, okay? I'm gonna show you in just a moment how we flip it over. So, where's the third vanishing point? Let's start with that because it's truly the easiest here. It's up top, okay? In this example, it's a bit more subtle. It's outside the scene, okay? And I'm gonna complete it for you. You'll, you'll get it, don't worry. So, here is, and the reason I, I it's really important to teach the idea and then you will be able to draw it in the future. Don't worry if you, you think to yourself, okay, I, I get it now finally, but how do I translate it to a, a drawing? Already, you got it, okay? You already, just the fact that you understand the concept will help you. This is really important. Just the fact that you now understand what you're looking at, you'll know what to look for and you just give it a go. You'll try a lot of times and you'll get it. So let me show you. All of these lines move away from us. This is the easiest example. What's closer to us? This brick here or this small brick here? Obviously, it's this one. So, this is one line. Which one is closer to us? This tip here or this part here? I know it's not really reliable, but hopefully you get it. This line here and this line here. All of these lines move away from us. Okay, this line here this line here. Now what will happen again if I connect all of these lines on a fresh new piece of paper because we don't have much room here. Look at that. I'm just going to continue one. I'm not as accurate as I could be but hopefully the point will get across. All of these lines meet somewhere up. To, now I'm not accurate because this line is off. This line is incorrect. I, I See here I relied on a vague thing, okay? I couldn't rely on that. I should have relied on a very clear line. But in any case, here we go. All of these lead to a vanishing point somewhere up top. You can't even see it here, so it's going to be somewhere around here, okay? But let's just do it here just for our own fun and amusement. So that's one vanishing point. Now, where's the other two? Look for sets of parallel lines. And this is actually a great example, okay? Um, and by the way, Liran, can you post the, that cathedral photo? You mean this one? I, I'm going to have links to everything below, including this one. Okay, I promise I will put links and especially I'm going to write down cathedral next to this one. Cathedral photo. I'm writing it down for myself. Um, I'm going to, you're going to have all the references I'm using. I didn't mention, uh, you're going to have all of them. Okay. Sorry that I didn't put them yet in the, in the, um, video description because I didn't know what they were going to be yet. So. What sets of parallel lines we have aside from that? The easiest thing to look at is this structure right here. Look at this thing here. So one set of lines is going to be this way and another one is this way. I can already tell immediately with experience you'll be able to find these more easily, okay? See these two points? These are also on that same lane, so to speak. These windows, same. 
these arches same. Um, so these are the main ones. Let me show you what these look like. So we basically have the first lines we drew, these lines. Then we have the second and third sets we drew. And look at what we got here. The exact same thing. Top, side. And it's a building that moves away from us. Okay? That's all there is to it. Now let me do it clearer. Okay? And now this is a bit of a scratchy piece of paper. Let's, let me show you just here on a separate thing here. So we have... Um, where should I place it? Okay. Well, let's do it in the center. So we have this uh, scene here. Skipping between the uh, larger marker and the pen. We have a bunch of lines that move away from us. Towards that vanishing point. And we have this set of parallel lines. And that set of parallel lines. And if you connect a few of them, you'll get this structure we just did. Like that. The rest of the details is fluff. It's not as important. Let me show you. This tower here. Cool. Here it is. This tower here. Cool. Here it is. The middle thing here. The main structure. And look at all these lines. They move away from us in all three directions. Now here's something, and, and just quickly, just quickly, these will connect and be on the horizon line, two to the side on the horizon line, and one up top. The exact reverse, the exact opposite of what we had before, okay? That's what three-point perspective is all about. It's to show height. It's to show you looking at something tall or looking at something from above that's, that's um, very sh short or very low hanging, okay? And if the horizon line is here, we see more of the sky, which is actually exactly what we see here, okay? I hope that makes sense. Now, within this, we have more vanishing points. Now, this is very complex. There are a bunch of vanishing points, always. These are the main ones. Well, let me show you a few more. Okay, if this wasn't enough, I'm going to show you a few more. Look at these two lines, this one and this one of this window. You can be sure they also conform and um, taper to a vanishing point. Look at these two lines, this one, top of the window or top of this architectural structure component and this one. See this window? Same thing. It's in its own vanishing point. And you ask yourself, what's closer to me? This side of the window or this side? This side. So this gets smaller and converges to a vanishing point to the left. Okay? There are a bunch of those here. Let me show you a clearer example. Let's get rid of this paper here. I'm going to have a bunch of papers here. Let's recreate this structure here. I really want to drive home that point. Okay? So we basically have building. Now look at the tapering here. It's really funny to see the building doesn't look straight on because of that third point perspective. This is very common. You look at the sides of any picture you take of things from below, they taper. It's so strange. Like, shouldn't this be straight up like that? No, it shouldn't. That's what happens because of perspective. So let me show you. We basically have this tower thing and this is an oval for its shape like this, it moves away from us, so these two lines taper. And then we have the top. I know that's a very messy uh, redrawing, but bear with me here. This is the uh, top tower, it has this structure up top. Now, this thing isn't round, it's actually divided into multiple parts. So we have this part, 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 so let's connect them. This goes like this, this goes like that, this goes like this, like that. See? That's how you get, for example, the top part. Now, the bottom is also going to be based on a rounded shape. Now, this is very hard, what I'm doing right now. I'm having a hard time with it very often, too, so don't worry if you don't understand exactly how to do it. But I want to show you the, the thing we showed earlier. So. This moves away from us. 
So, this is going to taper ever so slightly. It's going to fan out very slightly. And this conforms to the third vanishing point up top. This one as well. This one as well. This one as well. And if you connect them, you'll get the sides of this building. Now, each one of these shapes actually conforms to a different vanishing point. And I actually have some colored pencils here, so why not show you using them? I put them here because I knew I'm going to need them at some point. Here's that point. This is one set of parallel lines. See? Like this. Sorry, I moved the camera a bit, maybe? I don't know. This is another set of parallel lines. See? This is another set of parallel lines. You'll always have a lot of these. Always. But when you look at this scene, what's the thing that stands out the most? It's got to be this. The third perspective, point of perspective. The third vanishing point. Now, what's the secondary one? You have this big structure here. So it's got to be these two. These are the main ones. You see? But there will always be some secondary ones. So bear that in mind. Okay? That's what three-point perspective is all about. Now, in this previous one, we don't really have more than these three because the structure is different. Here we have this very uh, beautiful architecture that has an angular building. This is mostly squares. Squares, 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 squares. Yes, some corners of buildings are not squared. So you'll very often see buildings that look like this. You'll get um, one corner, another corner, another something like this. But this corner is kind of like that. You'll very often see this. And then it tapers like that. See? And all, all of the windows also taper. So this will have a different vanishing point. This also. These two may be parallel lines. See, but usually in cityscapes, this is what you'll get. In more interesting architecture, this is what you'll get. Same goes for this tower here, you see? One, two, three. Now, this one's actually, it falls on this more prominent perspective. And I, wa I want to show you that. I, it's a bit hard, but I want to show you anyway. Um, we have this side of the building, and it goes like this and like that. And then we have this middle kind of uh, section. And it goes up all the way here, connects here, and then... This is now, I don't, I don't even understand. Okay, yeah. And then we have this line, like, huh. Yeah, okay, we're good, we're good. And then we have this one, and then we have that one. See? It's kind of a strange shape. See? I hope that makes sense. I don't know, I'm now, now I'm having second thoughts. Yeah, okay, because it's not a clear corner. It goes around like that. And it may go at an even rounder fashion, okay? And depending on how rounded it is. If you have a rounded structure that is then converted into straight lines, this is kind of what you'll get. But now I'm just going into mumbo jumbo. And I hope that it was clear. Uh, I hope that was uh, that example was clear. And these are the same. It's just different sides of the same coin. You see? Like this or like this. Either the vanishing point is above, like here, or it is below, like here. That's all there is to it. And the two others are, usually the main ones are going to be on the horizon line. And the most common types of scenes. Okay, so that was tiring. Let me go over another example with you soon. I just want to see what's up in the chat. Everyone says this is so helpful. Is anyone here? People answer. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything that stands out. Uh, so Omar had a question. I'm new to this channel, so can someone give me a run through? <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm an artist. I usually paint watercolor. To anyone who joined now for the first time, thank you so much. Cool125 says I'm underrated or this video is underrated. Either way, thank you so much. I usually do watercolor, but I also do drawing tutorials. I'm trying to help and inspire you to create yourself. That's the, the gist of it. Donna Bullman. Oh my god, now I get it. What a great teacher. Thank you. Um, that's the best thing I can hear, really. Abit Patil, do we avoid three-point perspective if horizon is a part of my sketch? Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. So you're saying that if you can see the horizon will there not be a third vanishing point? 
I think that's what you're asking. So let's let's give it a try. I don't have automatic answers to many of these questions, so I'm, I'm just going to give it a try. So let's say this is our scene, and we have a horizon line here. See, not, not necessarily a bit. Let's say that we do have a three-point perspective. Let's continue the horizon line. Let's decide one point is here, one point is here, and the third point is somewhere up there. Okay? Let's put a house here. Just a house. So, one wall is going to be uh, this way. Another wall is going to be this way. Okay? Now, we have a vanishing point up top. So, look at this. You could include a very subtle third vanishing point. What you are saying is correct to some extent. I would be careful in how much I apply that tapering. Because if I go, this is already extreme, honestly. If I go more extreme than that, it will feel like we're actually looking at a, at a structure that is not, um, that is not a, for example, this is a cube, like so. If I go too extreme, it may feel like we're looking at a structure that's kind of like that. See? Like a pyramid. Let me do this again here. So let's say it may feel like... So this may feel, if we're doing it too prominent of a third point, it may feel like that. You are correct. You need to be careful with it, I guess. It is possible, though. Uh, it may feel a little exaggerated, but it is possible, you see? It's very subtle, by the way. These, these The tapering is very subtle here. You are kind of correct in that usually this effect is going to be the most noticeable when the horizon line is either above the scene or below it. You are right. That's a great observation, actually. A bit, that's a great observation. Yes, for the most part, when you do these extreme scenes, the horizon line is going to be outside the frame. That's That's a good one. I'll have to think about just how much you can push it, though. But that's a good insight. So let's see. Ah, <laughs> oh, Gabrielovich, my friend. Oh, I'm late. Hi, Liron. Hi. Emilian SRL. Hi, Liron. Hi. How are you? Arasai. Liron, is it possible having more than five-point perspective to draw? Well, it is, as I've shown you right now. You can have a bunch of vanishing points, and you can call it a five-point perspective in theory. How many vanishing points can you manage? I'm a watercolor artist, says Pence Palacio. I think three are my most. I, I can't do much more than that, honestly. Uh, Cyan Patnik, uh, just right now, what did I miss? Uh, watch the replay. There was quite a lot, to be honest. Um, but basically, perspective, three-dimensionality, stuff like that. Um, it's getting a bit of a, live, uh, a long live, so I'm, I may wrap it up soon, actually. So sorry to anyone who was uh, late. Uh, I will keep the video up, as always. Abit Patel, I imagine a huge skyscraper in the clouds where I can see above and below. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that could work. Let's see. I have to sign out now. Gail, thank you so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, Kit Kito, I struggle to define perspective on scene even though I'm uh -huh. able to define it through uh, pictures. Oh, so Kit Kito, let me know. Do you mean when you're actually outside you're struggling? Let me know. That's interesting. Are you struggling from real life? Let me know. Um, now let's get rid of some of these. I want to show you another one. That's easier. Should have probably started with this one, but another third point perspective. Oh, yes. Okay. So Kit Kito, two tips for that. One, use your phone or whatever to take a picture. Take a picture of the scene and look at it then. Um, I would also think about it logically. Where's the horizon line? Ask yourself, where the sky meets the land? You can usually see it even in cities, even when you're looking at a cityscape. You can kind of tell. Then ask yourself, what part of this building is closer to me? And what you want to do is have this kind of a piece of paper. It doesn't even have to be the main paper on which you do your work. And maybe you just spot one building, okay, just one building. So you just go, okay, so I see that there is this wall here. What part of this wall to the side, this corner, sorry. What part is closer to me? Okay, this corner is farther. So let's put it and make it smaller. Oh, okay. Now let's connect the two. Okay. Oh, so this is how they connect. 
and you go like this. Okay, so this is how this one connects, maybe like this, more like that. You slowly build it up, you see? And then you ask yourself, okay, where's the horizon line? Now, here's a good trick. If you can't find a horizon line, ask yourself, what's the thing that's obstructing it from you? If you see a person standing here and that's the... Well, if you're... Okay, yeah, let me reiterate. If you have a person here and you know that you're at eye level, you're just standing there, you're not on a hill, you're not sitting down on the floor, that person is probably cutting the horizon line for you, okay? As I mentioned, whatever cuts through the horizon line is our height. So if you know you're just standing there looking at the reference, if you see a person, that's, their head is usually where the horizon line is, unless, an exception, there is an angle of the steep street or going down or up. That's the only exception. Okay, I hope that helps. You can always take a picture. That's like the main thing I will do. Just take a picture. It really, really helps. Uh, Replicana says, hey, good night then. Uh, sorry if I missed another message, but if you have to uh, check out, thank you so much for uh, joining. Thank you for being here. Now let's go over this one real quick. So the most clear vanishing point is that third vanishing point up in the sky, somewhere around there towards that direction. Now here we don't really have that strong of a three point perspective. We have just a bunch of random ones. So this is a good example. This is one, okay, this is one vanishing point somewhere down there. Because you have to remember all of these windows are, these lines are parallel just as much as these lines are parallel. Okay, so that's one. The second one, maybe this one here on this building and then this one, but it's not that important here. And this is an interesting uh, takeaway. Not in all scenes you'll have an important composition of three vanishing points. This is a good example of that. Just that, okay? And this time it's above us, obviously. I hope that makes sense. Let's see what else we have here. I have just a few more examples. So, whew, this is complex. So here we have a bunch of things going on and I did want to share it with you because I do find it interesting. So for the most part, this is kind of a one point perspective, if you will. You have the bottoms of the buildings and their tops, they're parallel if they were structured correctly. So this is kind of it. You can treat it like a road going into the distance. But here's where it gets tricky. You see that's a, a decline, okay? It goes like this, I'm not inclined, decline. It goes down. How do I know that it goes down? I kind of guess, to be honest with you, it's either that our point of view is tall or that it's just going down. Why? If we were to connect these two lines, we'll get to a horizon line that's somewhere around here. I'm going to explain. This line is parallel to this line. So if we connect these two, we get to here. This line is parallel to this line. So if we connect the two, we get to here. And remember that the horizon line, the two vanishing, po the vanishing points are going to be on it, unless it's the third one. So that tells me that this is the approximate location of the horizon line. Now look at these two people. Maybe you can barely see them. I'm sorry if you can't see them, but these two people are here. Now, do they intersect the horizon line? No. Okay, they don't. And this is the main, most important point. We have a troll here. There we go. Done. <laughs> I'm, I'm such a good multitasker. Okay. <laughs> so, it's just a troll. Don't mind it. It happens. So, um, these two people are nowhere near the horizon line. Okay? They're lower than that. What does that tell us? That we're looking at them from above. And that's the key takeaway. That's the most important part here. It's the way I want you to think about these things. Now, when you look at this horizon line, it's extremely strange. You think to yourself, wow, it can't be this tall. It's very strange. And it may not be this tall. It may be here in real life. It may be here. It may be here. I don't know. But you have to understand, when you look at something that goes downwards, okay, it changes the whole picture. Things move. Things are skewed. 
It's sort of like if you just look from a cliffside and you see things from up above, okay, it's, it's different. It looks like the horizon line is one point when it's actually at another point. I want you to forget about all of that. What I want you to do is find a set of parallel lines that move away from you. So we have this building, top and bottom. If we were to connect these two, we'd get this point. Now notice what happens, it moves away like this. So it moves away like that. We connect it all the way in the distance, somewhere around here. Connect these two dots, you get the horizon line. If you see people here, it means you're taller than them. Your point of view is higher than them, no matter what. You're looking at them from above, maybe even just slightly, but from above. If, they're, if you see them above it, they're taller than you. If you see someone here standing on this rooftop, they're taller than you, okay, <laughs> obviously. Um, I know this is complex. This, um, this calls for a separate video. Um, I'll try and do something on it. I'm not a master of this yet because this is a very advanced, um, same as measuring, stuff like that. I know that's a little complex. Um, for now, that will be my demonstration of three-point perspective for now, okay? I know it's hard. Um, now, last example is this one. I also want to show you how perspective is always at play, even when it's not as obvious. Let me see the comments for, for a second. Let's see that I'm not missing anything um, too important, aside from that troll. Best perspective explanations I've heard in a long time, says Leah's Kitchen. Thank you so much, Leah. I really appreciate it. I will surely go back and watch the full video and recap. Sign, I recommend it. Um, I think you'll find it back find it really um, worthy of your time. Real in Pagarao, excuse me, I will be back, no worries. Um, I think we're gonna wrap it up soon, so it's been two hours. <laughs> Sorry, I have to blow my nose. <laughs> Just imagine, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know, it's hard, it's hard. If I cannot locate the vanishing point or if they fall outside the paper, do I just estimate it? Sorry if I'm asking a silly question. So Kusum Shabong Art. That's not a silly question at all. And let me tell you a secret. Most of the paintings I do, the vanishing point, I don't know if most, but a big chunk of the paintings I do, the vanishing point is outside the paper. That's something you will always have to deal with. So let me show you an example. Let's say you're painting a building. You're just out in the street. You saw a nice building. You're painting it. You're looking at it from the side. So you see something like this. You're just standing in front of it. This is the sidewalk. Maybe you're on the other side of the road. You have the beautiful uh, windows. Maybe there's a, an architectural detail here. It's so fun. Sun is shining. People are, um, let's see if we go like this. People are just walking in the street. That's a person, believe it or not. The vanishing point here is outside. But look at what I did here. I established the top. I establish the bottom and everything else falls in between. So the short answer is yes, you estimate. You can't know for certain, you have to estimate. Now here's a trick for you. Here's an interesting trick for you. Well, let's say that you have this wall and you want to drop a line for the windows, but you don't know how to do it. Should you do it this way, this way? What's the right angle? Here's a trick for you. Where's the middle here? It's right here, approximately. Where's the middle here? It's right here. Connect the two and you're done. That's it. Ask yourself the same for this section. Where's the middle? Where's the center? Here. Where's the center? Is it here? No. Is it here? No, it's here. Center between these two dots. Connect, and you're done. Where's the center here? Where's the center here? Connect, you're done. Just one of many examples of how you can guesstimate, okay? It's one good way of doing that. Um, you will learn with time to not use any of these tricks. You'll just be able to get it. Um, but it is challenging at first. I know, I know, it is. And I get it wrong all the time and I have to fix it and go back and improve. It's very common. Uh, okay. So, last example, this one. Now, how does perspective play a role here? Look at this twisty snake road. If anyone ever watched Dragon Ball Z, snake road. Let's try to find a pattern here. 
Okay, it's not going to be perfect, but let's try. So I would assume, even though I may be mistaken, I would assume that if we look at it from above, it will look something like this. Okay, now it may very well look something like this. But I would assume it's kind of like this. What this means is that this length is kind of the same as this length, is kind of the same as this length, this length, this length, and just follow the edges, okay? Follow the edges. Follow the other side. This edge, this edge. Look at this nice pattern here. This should probably go like this, by the way. You see? We found a pattern. So we know that things get farther from us in this way. Now we can even almost find a vanishing point. Almost. If we do this line, and then this line, and then this line, and then this line, and then this line. Now, let me ask you a trick question. These, all of these lines do not conform to the same vanishing point. You know what? I'm not even sure if that's a good question to ask. Hmm. You know what? I think it is. Okay. Hmm. No, I'm not sure. No, no, no. It, it has nothing to do with that. No, that's not a good example. Never mind. But they kind of go in the same direction, okay? Kind of. So we found a pattern. It's not perfect, but it's a pattern nonetheless. So let's see it here more cleanly. <laughs> I'm going to run out of paper. Probably already did. Okay, let's do it here. So the pattern we got is something like this. And then this. See? Already you see how perspective plays a role here. This chunky road gets smaller the farther it gets from us. Okay? These lines get shorter. Shorter. Look at this length compared to this length. Compared to this length. Look at the distance, the difference. And this is maybe similar. And this is in reality maybe a similar length. But because of perspective, this looks so much smaller than this one almost a half probably a half okay so you do see perspective at play here this car is much larger than this car and if you'd have another car here it's going to be much larger than this car this car is smaller than this car because this goes away from us okay it's always at play it may be subtle it may be hard to understand but it's always at play. Even these cones, that's funny. This is going to give you a, a kick. These cones from top to bottom, and you can barely see them. Look at these cones. Top of the cone, bottom, goes like this. 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 Look at this one here. I think we almost have a third vanishing point almost it's very bizarre let me give you another example so if you have a cone how should i do this let me let me this is going to be the last example and then we'll finally um uh wrap it up because it's, it's a bit of a complex topic um so let's see let's say hmm uh, now I'm wondering how I should demo this. This is really complex. Um, do I need that third vanishing point? Yeah, I do. I do. Okay. So let's say we have a bunch of cones here. They're also going to conform to perspective. And what do I mean by this? If we have this third vanishing point below, one cone is going to point in that direction. And another one is going to just be slightly tilted more to the right. And another one is going to just slightly be tilted to the left. It affects everything. That's my point. It's, it won't happen in this small of a, of, a, of, a, um, of a space. It will usually happen if the cones are this tiny. But that's a bit of a different topic for another time. It's really... Um, it's complex. I don't even know if I, if I know how to explain it. I understand it intuitively. I don't know if I understand how to explain it. Let's do this. Let's wrap it up. I think this is a good solid two hour live. My voice is tired. Let's look at some of the comments. Make sure that I didn't miss anything too important. Face to face. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Take practice. Yeah, we don't have too much. If you have a question, drop it now, but I think we're gonna uh, move towards wrapping this one up. I wanna thank you for joining. It really means a lot to me uh, to be able to explain these terribly, uh, terribly nightmarish concepts for some. I know that uh, hopefully seeing this overlaid with pictures and with all the explanations makes sense. Um, I will give you a few tips. Whatever your question is, get out of my way. <laughs> Whatever your uh, problem or you know problem you need to solve with the reference whatever it is first step look at the reference look at that because the 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 solution is gonna be there okay measure if you need to use pictures um, measure the different relations between different areas in the picture your answer will always be there okay so whatever it is if you're having a hard time, take a picture and then try analyzing it. Just like with watercolor, you take a picture, turn it black and white, play around with the values, play around with different filters to see it more clearly. Same thing. Um, what else? What else? You just need to practice. Okay, one more thing. One last thing. I really want you to practice uh, drawing a cube in three-dimensional shape. Now let me show you what I mean. I want you to be able to start drawing a cube in the way that I've shown you, which means the cube will taper always. Let me show you the desk here. I need to move it back. Okay. What you want to do is be able to think about it this way. Am I looking at the cube from above or from below? If I'm looking at it from above, and let's say a perspectiveless cube is something like this. Now, if I'm looking at it from above, this corner is closest to me. So that's the corner. This is one line. That's fine. That's another line. That's fine. And that's another line. That's fine. Three lines. Because I'm looking at it from above, I see all of these three areas. But is this side closer than this side? Yes. So this side needs to be shorter. It can't be the same length. It can't end here. Same length. Nope. It has to end here. How will I do this? By tapering these two lines. Very subtle. It's a very subtle effect. Okay? Now, is this closer to us than this? Yep. So this bottom line can't end here. You taper it this way. You do the same process here. Not parallel. Not parallel. Tapered. Slightly. Not parallel to that line, tapered slightly. Don't go like this, taper it. Sorry, taper it the other way around. It's getting larger. Taper it like this. This line, taper it like this, not the same angle. And this line, taper it like this, not the same angle. And you get a much more dynamic cube. Practice doing that from every angle. And Kitkito, the last example is confusing. Trust me, there is no set in stone rule. It's very, it's a very challenging one. Don't worry about it. You will not always have clear rules. That's a part of the, the lesson here. You won't always have a clear rule describing reality that you can notice. Okay, it's not always easy. You have to sometimes wing it. You have to sometimes kind of imagine it. Okay, that's fine. I want you to be able to do this from every angle. So if we're looking at it from below, what will we see from below? We're going to see this corner. Let's say we're looking from below. We'll see this corner right here. This line goes like that. This line goes like this. You do need some experience to know even that, but you will get it. Practice. Look at a real cube. You'll get it. And this line goes like that. Now taper. Not the same angle. Taper it a bit. Taper it a bit. Taper this a bit. Taper. Uh, now I'm confused. Taper this a bit. Taper this a bit. Taper this a bit. Okay? Yeah. We're good. We're good. Okay, now I, I made it a little too long, obviously. It should be something like that, but that's fine. Um, let's try out again. It should probably be more something like this. See, and you need to be able to do this from every angle. Rotate it a bit to the left. How will that happen? One line will get this angle, and another one will get this angle. And then 
you're seeing it from below. So maybe like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. I just want you to get to the point where you can do these things in your mind. It's going to take a lot of practice. Okay, it, it is. And I may do a separate video just on this topic because it's an important exercise I want you to be able to do. Okay, now we can truly wrap it up. Look at just some of the comments. I see a lot of people have missed the first uh, half or the start. Jane Owen says, uh, she, uh, she misses as well. Um, go back and watch the live replay. Um, sorry about that. I don't know why the live started with fewer people and then gradually everyone joined. So uh, I hope it makes sense. Mark says another great live stream. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Gabrilovich says, Liron, whatever the question is, get out of my way. <laughs> get out of my way. Okay. Um, let's see. Marjorie Johnson, have a good evening or day. I'm going to now take a nap. Enjoy it, Replicana. I just learned a new word, Po, and you deserve it. What's Po? Let me know. Monica Olivier, really good. Is it Olivier or Olivier? Olivier. Okay, let me know. Really good explanation. Thank you, Liron. Thank you. Kit Kit, a little confused at the last example. As we said, no rules set in stone. This is just rules to describe common occurrences. Sometimes it won't be a common occurrence. That's fine. Rotate the paper, you got the bottom. Uh, you mean you couldn't see it? Sorry, my bad. Abit Patil, this is my first time in, uh, at any art session. I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, um, keep joining. We're going to do this almost every Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. So far, it's like the fifth one, I believe. Marjorie Johnson, what I should have learned in art class 60 years ago. Dwayne, 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 I'm completely new to drawing, so perspective is hard to get used to. Yes, it is. Um, you may want to start with something simpler. There are some simpler things, too. Um, just getting to know how to draw lines the way you want them to. For example, what you want to do is just draw two dots and then work on connecting them with a straight line, controlling them from the shoulder. Go like this and do this. Practice drawing circles, ovals, a lot of things to practice before you even get to perspective. It's fine. Step by step, you will get it. Um, uh, Eldon Summers, I just joined when I saw it was live. Uh, I imagine others did the same. Yeah, I get it. That's fine. Uh, you can watch the replay always. Ellen says she will watch the replay. Thank you so much, Ellen, and for being here. Uh, thank you, Kasum Shabong Art. Uh, MMS Betty 3D Live is very interesting. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Nikolai Kai, I really, really appreciate you doing this. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much. Let me show you my face again. Um, Ellen Gillis, I just want to draw houses correctly. Yeah, you will get it. You will get it. Start with cubes because very fast. Again, I'm ke I keep rotating the cameras. Uh, a cube can very easily become a house. Okay, so just have that in mind. Uh, it's really the basis for pretty much everything and anything. And here's uh, here's a um, here's an industrial kind of structure, maybe like that. You can do a bunch of things with this. Really, it's the basis for everything, pretty much. Um, um, uh, Natural Inspirations Art Studio. You have been a great teacher. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. Replicana esque uh, the Philippines. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google that now. I can't. I'm sorry. I have to do that now. Um, po meaning in Philippines. I'm gonna find my answer. What does the word Po mean in Philippines? The Po is usually affixed to the end of a sentence or phrase when one is addressing someone older. Oh, wow! Thank you so much. So it's like a sensei or a master or a, a professor, then uh, thank you so much, I guess. Wow, uh, I feel honored. It feels too much even, but thank you. Uh, so much good information. I will have to rewatch to take it all in. Definitely uh, let me know how that replay is working in the comments. Let me know if you um, feel like you have a good grasp of the concept. Uh, Maria Dika, kids. <laughs> okay, so the kids interrupt you. Uh, Rayleigh Pagaro says like this. What are your favorite things to draw? I love painting cars. <laughs> cars. Pokemon has been a recent one of mine. I'll show you in a future live video. In any case, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap it up now. Sorry for the shaky camera. Take care. I will see you again next week, hopefully, as usual, Thursday, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Stay safe. I'll talk to you again real, real soon.